Good afternoon. We're still busy with the topic of investments, and today we're going to look at the difference between ordinary and preference shares. Once we've completed that, we'll look at a couple of concepts that you'll need to be able to explain and discuss. So let's see what are the fundamental differences between ordinary and preference shares. So with ordinary shares, you will only receive dividends when profit is made by the company. However, with preference shares, some of these types of shares, and remember there are eight types of shares, will receive dividends regardless of if the company has made profit or not. Normally, with ordinary shares, the higher the profit, the higher the dividend. Now remember, with preference shares, it is a fixed rate of return is paid on this type of share. With ordinary shares, the shareholders are the last to be paid out, whereas with preference shares, they have preference claim on any company assets if the company goes into liquidation. Ordinary shares have no special rights or restrictions, so sometimes they are referred to as standard shares, whereas with preference shares, these shares enjoy preferential rights to dividends or repayment over ordinary shares. With ordinary shares, dividends vary from year to year, so they fluctuate and they change. Whereas with preference shares, dividends are payable according to the type of preference shares. Remember, the non-cumulative preference shareholders will not receive any outstanding dividends from previous years, whereas a cumulative one, it will accumulate year on year. Lastly, ordinary shares have shareholders have a right to vote at the annual general meeting, whereas with preference shares, their voting rights are restricted, so they do not have any voting rights. Right, now we move on to investment concepts. There are five different concepts that you will need to be able to define and explain. These are debentures, dividends, capital gain, simple interest, and compound interest. So if we look at debentures first, it is issued to raise borrowed capital from the public. So the lender or debenture holder agrees to lend money to the company on certain conditions for a certain period of time. The debenture holder is like a creditor as the company is liable to repay them at a certain given time. Most types of debentures can be traded on the JSE. Debenture holders do receive annual interest payments based on the terms or the amount of debenture put down. Now if we look at dividends, dividends is the return on an investment in shares which is paid regularly by a company to its shareholders, either annually or twice a year. Dividends are decided and managed by the company's board of directors and they are approved by the shareholders through their voting rights. Now moving on to capital gain. This is the return on property or a fixed asset or an investment. Right? So capital gain is how much has your money grown by. But we also get something called capital gains tax, or CGT. And this is only when you sell your second property and it has increased in value. You pay capital gains tax on that increase. So if I bought a house for a million and I sold it for 2.2 million and my profit was a million rand after all my costs, then I would have to pay capital gains tax on that million rand profit of selling that second property. Now we move on to simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest, the interest is calculated on the original or principal amount invested. So if I invest 100 rand in a savings account, I will earn interest just on that 100 rand. Whereas compound interest is calculated in every period on the original amount plus the interest. So if I have that same 100 Rand in a savings account and I earn 10%, every time that 10% on that 100 Rand will be added. So after the first period, I'll have 110 Rand, and then I calculate interest on 110 Rand. Then I'll have 111 Rand, and so it grows and grows and grows. So the comparison of these is as follows. With simple interest, the interest is earned on the original amount and not on any interest accrued. With the compound interest, Interest is earned on the principal amount plus any previous interest. With the simple interest, the principal amount stays the same. It stays at 100 Rand. Whereas with the compound interest, 
that principal amount grows all the time. So it went from 100 to 110, then it would be 121. Simple interest, the interest is kept separate, right, unless it is reinvested. However, with compound interest, the interest is calculated on the higher principal amount and again added to it. Simple interest yields less return on an investment, whereas compound interest yields a higher return on investment. So finally, with simple interest, the total amount of interest earned on investment is less. However, with compound interest, the total amount of interest earned on investment is high. You will need to know how to calculate simple interest and you need to know this formula. So remember, it's only calculated on the initial amount, that principal amount. So if we look at this example below, Mark invests 5,000 Rand in a government retail bond for three years and receives simple interest at a rate of 10%. Each time the money is paid out, Mark takes the interest. After three years, how much interest has Mark received from this investment? So our principal amount is going to be 5,000 Rand times, what is the interest rate? 10%, so 10 over 100, times my time. So this is three years, right? So I've got 5,000 times 10 over 100 times three, and the answer, if you use it now, you'll see is 1,500. The next question says, what is the final value of his investment? So in other words, I want to know at the end, how much has his investment been worth? So he first put 5,000 Rand in, plus he earned 1,500. So his final value of investment is 6,500. You will also need to know how to calculate compound interest. Remember, this is calculated on the initial amount invested plus the interest that has already been earned. Again, you need to know this formula. And the formula is P for principal amount or initial amount times, open your brackets, 1 plus the interest rate, R over 100, close your brackets, and a little N as an exponent for the time that it was invested, the number of years. So again, we have Matthew invests 5,000 Rand in a government retail bond for three years and receives compound interest at a rate of 10%. Each time the money is paid out, Matthew takes this money. After three years, how much interest has Matthew received from this investment? So my principal amount is 5,000 times, open your brackets, 1 plus 10 over 100 to three years, and the answer is 6,655. The next question says, at the end of the three years, how much interest has Matthew received? So now we just want to know the interest not the final value. So we've got to say 6,655 minus the initial 5,000 Rand gives us 1,655. Be very careful that you read the questions carefully. So finally, once you've done your calculations, you're going to have to recommend the best option based on the calculation. All the best, guys.